Well, hello, internet. So today, I'm going to be doing my final project, so I hope you like it. Today we're talking about a very interesting painting about a prostitute. I'll wait, promise it's not that risky. It's actually um, called Grand Odalesque by Jean Ingray. Um, so here we go. I'm going to try my best to not lecture you and kind of make this remotely interesting. So wish me luck. So I guess some background information about this piece is that it was commissioned in 1814 by the Napoleon family. So you think they would have a lot of money, right? Uh, nope, just kidding. He never got paid for it. And actually, the two other pieces that were made in this one were destroyed by the rides due to their lack of money. And pretty much their kingdom kind of just fell apart after this. So, you know, there's that. So I guess some history is that he was born on August 29th in 1780 in France and he pretty much started painting at 11 years old like really high skill stuff like I'm pretty sure I just just stick figures at the age of 11 and then at the age of 16 he moved to France to study art professionally and honestly he never was known for his goals as a painter he wanted to be known for grand manor paintings example that these were pretty much paintings that people would go look at in public places and they would be like wow this really makes me think of a moral st and a story like that really made me think about something important but no one ever really paid attention to those because guess what he got known for his paintings about naked ladies so exciting right right so i have a few interpretations i'm going to be talking about um first i'm going to look through three time periods about what people pretty much thought about painting of prostitution you know so let's start at 1819 so first people thought this piece was trash they were like mm, no this is not an okay thing like it wasn't a correct anatomy why would we like something that was not 100 percent accurate because that sucks your teacher was jackie louise david he taught you exactly how anatomy works why are you not following this because you definitely need to be doing that. And then they were like, wow, it's really Turkish. You know that's so dingy and outdated, right? Because no one likes that style anymore. Why are you painting this? It does not make any sense. And then they like just dusted off their shoulders and went on to the next one. It was nothing too exciting back then. It was pretty much just too risque for the time period. So now, we are jumping forward to 1968. And so there was another showing in Europe for this piece. And I'm going to tell you, people loved it then. They were like, wow, he was so forward thinking for his time. It's wild. This black background, it's just so simplistic. It just brings out the figure and her shape so, so well. They were just so impressed. They thought it was so clever and beautiful. People also thought that it was very exciting to see a nude that wasn't fully nude and wasn't just fully showing herself out there. And they're like, so that must mean she was very pure and innocent, even though she's naked. So it's a little contradictory, but people were about it. So, and a lot of people were thinking, hey, maybe Ingray actually had a fantasy about these girls of the East, maybe that's why he's painting them. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm, you know what I'm talking about. So now we're jumping forward to current day. All these articles are from within the last few years. And honestly, not much has changed except that people uh, like have now realized that, wow, this piece is actually pretty erotic in nature. Mostly because people now have accepted the actual painting is about a harem and if you don't know what a harem is think of it as your husband having another lady to go to at the end of the night so she kind of just like stayed at the house all the time with your wife maybe they were friends i'm not i'm not quite sure but anyways onward there was actually a medical study done and it proved that she has not one not two but five extra vertebrates in her back. Like, we're talking like, whoosh, almost like Nike Swish. Pretty intense. <laughs> so anyway, um, 
They're also thinking that this looked more believable because the left arm is shorter and that the head is placed further away from the pelvis to give it more of a elongated, beautiful feeling. So now, moving forward to my second interpretation, we're going to be uh, talking about Ingrid's fascination with Eastern culture and how that relates to colonialism and French viewpoints. So at this time period in general, there was lots of objects, furniture, clothing, fabrics coming from um, Turkey and Northern Africa to France and people were very fascinated, which included Ingray and he was like, wow, I should make a painting about this culture because it is just so cool and commenced the Grand Odalesque and other paintings he made based this culture uh, to name a few were the Turkish bath and was double study for Odalesque with slave. So in this piece, there are a lot of objects that relate it to this Eastern culture. So I'm going to list them for you now. Drum roll, please. Um, so let's start off with first, um, the lady herself, she is wearing a turban, which is a type of headwear that is common, no surprise. And then also, um, she does have jewelry on her right wrist. You know, it looks very fancy, like woven gold, possibly fine beads. And then also, she does have a peacock fan. So, you know, these feathers did come from this region, so it is no surprise. And then also, we can look at the linens of this piece and see they are made of fine silk, embroidery. This all is very common for the area and also were very common with the imports that were happening. And then one of our biggest, most enticing parts that remind us of the Eastern culture is the pipe in the bottom right hand corner and that is a hookah or possibly an opium pipe you know this really foreshadows that hey they were probably smoking opium while they were you know doing the the thing with each other so so now relating all of this fun exciting information to colonialism and the French like first off why would you paint a harem? You know, maybe it's because at this time, the French were conquering and colonizing these areas. And maybe to in engray that this, this lady that often was paid for for the night to enjoy, mostly dominated by the man, could represent the people of the whole entire country. And that the French would just come in, take over these lands, and then get the resources they wanted from it, and then not do much else for these people at all. Honestly, let's be real. The French, most of the time, were not very nice when conquering these lands. So, relating that to the piece, is that the lady in here is very modest. You know, she doesn't show her full breast, her full butt, and this could relate to the innocence of the people. It's like, hey, they were just, you know, chilling, doing their thing. And then the lady's looking over like, oh crap. What's going on? And that's pretty much the French walking into a room, taking over and conquering it all. How is this romanticized when you know that the lady is a harem? You know, well, we can start with first, her skin is a lot lighter than mostly for the region. And this was to make it relatable to the French, how there's this lady that just looks so innocent and pure, looking over her shoulder, not showing all of herself. Like, wow, I can put myself in that scene imagine how crazy that would make me feel that's so overwhelming has these elongated limbs her back is graceful the light and the painting is so soft the texture is smooth all around and this was some common traits for romanticism paintings that lead forward you know like a stepping stone into that 